Welcome to the first episode of The State of Real Estate, where I, Joshua DeVore, will give you updates and information on all things real estate. I am a real estate agent centrally located in Columbus, Ohio, and today we're gonna to be covering SVB, the Silicon Valley Bank, the $200 billion bank that collapsed. But first, I'd like to take a look at the inventory in Columbus, Ohio, where I am locally. Uh, I've got it right here on my computer. So far this week, as of today, Tuesday, April 4th, the date of me recording this, we have had about 240 homes hit the market. Bringing our total Columbus inventory to about 2,000 homes, it's a little under right now uh, just because Easter is just around the corner this weekend which is as to become expected. Now with that out of the way it's time to get into our main topic of discussion which is Silicon Valley Bank or SVB. Now I know I'm a little late I wanted to kind of make sure wait until the dust settles as you would say uh, and make sure I had all the information in front of me or as much as I could get <laughs> before I presented it to you and again I'm only going to be referring to this now as SVB because I don't want to waste your time and have a 35 minute video. So to understand the collapse, I think we have to have a basic understanding of how banks work. And how that is, is banks take deposits from customers and then loan it out to other customers for a profit. Your money doesn't just get deposited and then sit there collecting dust the whole time until you're you know, ready to take it out. Now, of course, in case banks get too aggressive, or I guess in better words, to prevent banks from getting too, from getting too aggressive, uh, there are government regulations that require a certain percentage uh, in the bank to act as reserves. So you can see the issue arises when customers want to take more money out than the banks have in reserve. Now SVB, SVB's customers were mainly tech industry clients. The tech industry, because of rising interest rates, has been hit pretty hard and a lot of SVB's clients were startups. So because of the slowing, there wasn't very many deposits going in and because most of the clients were startups, they needed a lot of money to do and run in their day-to-day -day business, and it, which would then dip into the bank's reserves. On a last minute effort, SVB was trying to raise money to, because their reserves were running too low. Um, but by then, it was too late. The panic had already spread. Everybody was going crazy. News outlets, of course, were going crazy. Um, and executive tech firms were transferring money out of SVB like crazy. Um, on March 9th, $42 billion were withdrawn from SVB. Uh, and their stock dropped by another 60% and on March 10th, their doors were closed. For my thoughts on the situation, on the collapse, whether I think it's gonna majorly, majorly- English, mother do you speak it? Yes. Affect the real estate market, uh, especially up here in Columbus, whether it's gonna affect our market or more nationally. I don't really feel comfortable uh, with giving you a educated opinion on what I think. Um, because I'm a real estate agent, I am not an economist, an economist and I do not have a crystal ball. Like I said, uh, like I said in one of my Instagram reels, which if you're not following me there, go follow me. Um, but for now, it seems like other large banks within our country are all in good positions and all we can really do right now is just kind of monitor it and kind of see where we go from there. I've also included some links in the, de in the description of this video in case you want to check out where I got my information. Uh, and of course, you know, there's an abundance of information out there so you don't have to get the inf your, all of it from either me or these other two links uh, that I've provided. But other than that, Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.